Hello students, I'm in the content under Unit 5 and you'll notice that there is a Unit 5 test. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on that test right now and if you could go ahead and do that with me and get that quiz started. Perfect. All right, so the first question says, what is the name for the parts of a picture that your eyes are drawn to? Is it asymmetrical areas? Is it highlight areas? Is it area of focus? Or is it framed areas? I'm pretty sure I remember seeing this under cropping. Do you remember that? Hmm, area of focus. In any image, your eyes are drawn to some parts of a picture more than others. These parts of an image are called areas of focus. Your eyes may be drawn to something based on its color or its position within an image. Fantastic. Next, an image's resolution is measured in pixels per inch, points per inch, dots per centimeter, or points per centimeter. If I remember correctly, we were in unit three when we were talking about um, optimizing images and um, image properties. So let's take a look there for the answer. So yes, if you remember, pixels, short for picture elements, are the building blocks of digital images. And resolution refers to the number of pixels in a digital image it is measured in pixels per inch, the number of pixels in a single square inch. The more pixels in an image, the higher the resolution and the smoother the image. Excellent. Next, question three. Optimization is a balance between resolution and pixels, image resolution and file size, hue and saturation, or foreground color and background color. I'm pretty sure we're going to find this in Unit 3 under Image Optimization. Let's look there for the answer. Image Optimization is a balance between image file size and image resolution. The more pixels something has, the larger the size of the file and the longer it will take to share it with others over the internet. When optimizing an image for the web, you'll use the smallest number of pixels that still looks good. Very good. Question four. If you are using the paintbrush tool and want to change the color of the paint being used, what should you change? Should you change the bucket color, the saturation color, the foreground color, or the background color. You know, if I remember correctly, we just covered this when we were doing our trace assignment. Let's see, adding color, could that be the place where we talked about that? Let's find out. Foreground color. Foreground color is the color of the paint you're using. Every time you open GIMP, black is the default foreground color. In the toolbox, the foreground color button will let you change the foreground color to one of your choice. When you change the foreground color, you'll change the brush color too. Excellent. And question five. Which tool can fill in large areas with color very quickly? Is it the paint all tool, the colorize tool, the background tool, or the bucket fill tool? I think we're also going to find this answer in Unit 5 as well. Let's keep going in that unit and see if we can find it. The Bucket Fill Tool. Using the Bucket Fill Tool is an easy way to fill in sections of an image with a single color or pattern. You'll use it to fill in an entire layer with a single color in just one click. So excellent, there you are. Make sure you save all of your responses and go to submit the quiz and have a great day.